Welcome back to Lamas Creations DIY. My name is Tammy. In today's video, we are going to look back on 14 different crafts that I have made since I started YouTube in March of 2020. One, 2021. Let's start crafting. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to coat our clay pots. I'm using this uh, nice, pretty light blue. And I mi mix in, sorry, I mix in another color just to give it a different color blue. Um, the blue that I was having was a little too light and I wanted it more like a denim blue almost. So I add in some dark blue just to change up the color a bit. Now I realized before I painted, I needed to draw on my Clay Pot Boys overalls. So what I'm doing here with my pencil is I'm just drawing in the shoulder parts of the overalls. I'm measuring to the back to make sure I get the back part of the shoulder parts similar to the front part. And I'm just drawing around just to make it look like a set of overalls on this Clay Pot Boy. If you're new to this channel, welcome! I hope you enjoy this video and I hope that you join our YouTube family. I do all sorts of crafts on here, lots with clay pots. I do wood crafts and trash to treasure. So if you're new, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like button and the notification bell so you can see all my videos. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to paint the parts in that would be his shirt. I think I'm, that's what I'm doing. Nope, I'm painting his, yes, his shirt. Yay. So what I'm doing is I'm painting his shirt. Um, I wanted his shirt to be blue and then I make his overalls like a, a really light gray color. I apologize. I did this craft a little while ago, so it's hard to remember what I did first. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the top parts of these two clay pots, which would be his pants and his arms. I'm only doing the top part and then the band around, I'm going to do it in gray. You don't have to have your clay pot already pre-painted white. I just had a whole bunch already that I've pre-painted white and I'm using them all up. Now that they're all painted in the blue, we're going to paint in the gray. The gray is a uh, chalk paint. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to paint in all of the overalls and the bands around of the arms and the legs. Now, as you can see, I'm using a smaller brush and I'm just going to go lightly around the edges of his legs and his arms, putting on that gray. Now that everything is all painted and dried, I'm going to be using floral wire and these buttons. You'll need a total of six buttons, I believe. So I measure out some floral wire. wire where did I go? There I am. So I measured out some floor wire. Then I snip it at the end using one of the buttons. Oh, sorry. I measure out another floor wire for the other leg. Then uh, using the buttons, I thread one end into a hole and the other end into a hole as well. So it kind of loops onto the button as you see what I'm doing there. So it holds the button on. Then what I do is I thread that wire up through that hole and that button there at the bottom will stop it from going through. Give it a little twist to help it stay put. And then that wire gets threaded through the body of the clay pot boy 
with another button on top, threading it through the holes as well. For that button, you don't have to thread it into separate holes. You can stick them both in the same hole. And that's one of his legs. Then I do the same thing for the second leg. And then as you see there, I threaded the floor wire back down through and then I stick it aside for now until I get the other leg on. I'll show you again the two strings into the button and it's hanging there. I thread it through the leg hole, up through the other hole and into that button, through the holes on that other button. Bring it through, make sure my legs are the same height or close to it. Then I take those wires and I thread it back down into another hole. Pull it through. Then I give it a little twist and a tie so it kind of bunches at the bottom. I clip off those extras and then I also add in a little bit of uh, glue gun glue in there to hold it down. So it's not constantly moving around, it's staying put. And there I am clipping off the extra pieces. Making sure it's nice and secure, adding a little more glue. Next, before sticking on the arms, we're going to draw on his face. So I decided to use that face. And what I'm doing is the old school trick. You use your the side of your pencil and you color really lots on the back. Stick your picture on the pot, or in this case it's a pot, but if you had a board or whatever and then you trace over it. And then your drawing will be traced onto the pot. And then that way you can color it in or what I'm gonna use, I believe is a marker. And you just trace over your drawing that you've traced onto the pot and you've got your face. See, there it is there, you can slightly see it. Using a fine tip, marker it's a sharpie i'm gonna just draw in his face now following that those lines that i put on there now that his face is drawn on we're going to put on his arms and basically the same way we put on his legs i'm gonna thread the button with the wire in two different holes. <laughs> and then I'm going to thread that wire through the hole of the pot and then up through the hole of the head. And again, I add a little button there. Your buttons just have to be big enough so it doesn't slip through the holes on the pot. Twist it a bit to secure it there. And make sure I have enough hanging so it hangs out the side of his head for an arm. I do the exact same thing for his other arm.
Now I'm going to add some little buttons for on his overalls. I found these in my stash. They're cute little square buttons. I'm going to use E6000 and hot glue. Little hot glue in the middle there and place it on his strap. I'll do the same thing for the other one. And now I'm going to add in a pocket, just some little details. Cute little pocket on the front. I'm just using my Sharpie marker. You don't have to do this. You could leave it exactly the way it was. And then I also add in some stitch marks around the top of the overalls just to give it that little extra bit of detail. And again, you don't have to do this. It's purely preference. Now that everything is ready to be put together, we line it up, make sure everything is going to go good. I use E6000 and my glue gun. I put E6000 down and then glue gun in spots where the E6000 isn't. That way I have an, an automatic hold and then the E6000 will give you a long time hold. You don't have to use E6000, you can use any type of glue that will hold longer than a glue gun glue. Holding it in place until he sets. Now we're going to add in some flowers. I take some floral foam. Normally um, you can glue it down or you don't have to. I decided to glue this one down, but normally I wouldn't because I usually use these outside and put real flowers in it, but for this one I decided to keep it in the house. Stick in my two lilies there and some of these cute little white daisies, daisy flower-like flowers. <laughs> and then I fill it in with some of those decorative rocks around just to hide the green floral that's on the inside, just to give it a little more weight as well. And there you have it, Clay Pot Boy. I think he's cute, good for the summer, nice out in with all your flowers. And there he is set up in my house, looking all nice and cute sitting there, smiling away, saying, look at my hair. I have funky hair. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to trace our circles onto the cardboard. I'm using the bottom of this clay pot plus the top of this clay pot. And then I also use the top to a jar as well. And then what I do is I cut them out and put them aside to use soon. There they are all cut out and ready to go. Next, what we're going to do is trace those circles on to the fabric of your choice. I'm using the pink, the blue, and the white. And there they are all, all cut out. Next, you're going to take whatever rope you're using. I'm using the jute rope. I put a little bit of glue on the bottom so that it doesn't frizzle and fray all over the place. And then starting in the middle of that cardboard, you're going to place your jute rope and while adding glue from your glue gun, you're going to wrap that rope and cover that entire cardboard piece circle. You're going to continue gluing and wrapping and gluing and wrapping until you're all the way down to the end. Here I am continuing to glue. I'm right at my very end almost cutting it off and I add a little more glue at the end so that the end doesn't fray. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to decide on what size of petal that you're going to use. I've decided that's how big I want mine and I cut off I think it's eight pieces of the same length. Next what you're going to do is you're going to fold your rope into two and glue it on the back creating a petal. Don't worry about all that glue and that mess that's going to happen back there because we will be covering that up. Next, what you're going to take is your ribbon of your choice. 
you're going to lay it on it, cut off the piece so that it all fits on there, and then you're going to glue that petal to the ribbon. After it's dry, you're going to trim the ribbon up so it's all along the edges of the petal. And there you have one petal for your flower. I do this same process for all the other petals and also for the other two flowers that I make. Now that all my petals are on, I decided it needed a little something else, so I'm going to add some greenery to it, some of these leaves. I decide where I want it and how I want to place it, and I just glue it down with my glue gun. Still looking at it, thinking it needs something else, but I decide I continue forward, sticking, I'm going to stick this pink felt onto the back, putting some glue around the edge. And then I stick it to the back of that flower, hiding up all that mess back there. I'm still thinking it needed something else. So I went and found these little white yellow daisies, pulled one off and decided, yep, that's going to go right there in the middle. I did the exact same thing for the other two. Now, this idea kind of came from another Crafter YouTube's channel. Her name is Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. Back before Easter, she made little bunnies looking like this. And I decided to make some. And while I was standing there looking at them, looking outside, I thought, hey, I can make flowers the exact same way. And here they are. I decided to put little hangers on in the back, so if I decide to hang them in my window or on the wall, I have those there to do so. And there they are, set up in my house. They're really pretty. I really enjoy them. First, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the body of this clay pot red. And if you haven't guessed it already yet, we're making a ladybug. So fun! I gave this pot uh, two and a half coats just to make sure everything was covered up. And here I am drying it because I hate waiting for paint to dry. Next what I'm going to do is deciding on where to draw the face. So I go for this middle piece. I liked having that little part in the middle popping up because I thought that would be kind of cute kind of looking like a nose. So I cut it out with my scissors and it's super easy because it's plastic. And then I take my drawing. First I line it up to see to make sure it's okay. Then I take my drawing and with a pencil I press somewhat fairly hard onto the plastic. I draw out my eyes. And then I show you here that you can kind of see it there but the dents went through so this way I can paint it. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my eyes in with the white paint so that you could see them. Just following along those lines that I put in onto the little plastic, I'm just painting them all in. Now that they're painted, we set it aside to dry. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little sponge brush that you can get from the Dollarama, and with the black paint, we're going to add dots all over the pot anywhere you want it, however many you like. It's all totally up to you. Whatever makes you think that you've had enough. Now taking my pliers and those wire things, I believe they came from flowers or something. I'm going to bend the ends down into somewhat of a circle-ish thing to make them look like antennas. For our ladybug. Then taking my glue stick, I glue on the eyes, making sure it's nice and secure. Then I take the antennas, place them as where I want them, and then using my glue gun again, I put a little bit of glue in behind the eye where the antenna is sitting, and just a little tiny bit on top to hold it in place. I do the exact same thing on the second one. 
As you can see, in the end, we never did use the black felt, so you won't need that. And here you have it, a cute little clay pot ladybug. He's cute. If you want to put him outside, just give it a clear coat of, of varnish or whatever to have it outside. And there it is, set up in my house. He's sitting on my windowsill now, looking outside. For this first craft, I had this uh, scalloped vase type thing, glass. First, what we're going to do is we're going to wash it. And then I'm going to take it outside and give it a light coating of white spray paint. I didn't want a full coverage. I just wanted it to look kind of frosted looking. So that's what I did. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue paint from Dollarama and I'm going to paint the scalloped edge all in blue. This here took three, maybe four coats of blue just to get a good full coverage. Then taking this skewer, I'm going to paint just the tip orange. Now that everything is dry, next what we're going to do is I'm taking this nice fuzzy sock and we're going to put it on over top to make a hat. A little toque. Putting some hot glue and some E6000 all around the edge to make sure that it stays in place. Then I found this rope in my stash and I thought it would be perfect so I just tied it off on the base and did a simple bow, shoestring bow, and had it all nice and tied there. Fixing my bow. Then taking some scissors we're going to cut half of that sock off and then I'm going to cut downwards on this sock making some fringes. Just cutting as far down as I can until I thought it was good enough. And also to make sure that it, that heel, the heel of the sock was there, and I didn't want it to look like a heel. <laughs> now what we're going to do is I found these buttons. Those are going to be his eyes. I'm going to glue them on with some E6000, a little wee bit, and a little wee bit of hot glue, and put them into place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then, taking my little bit of orange part there on the skewer stick i'm going to snip it off and again using e6000 and hot glue we're going to glue it right in the middle there for his little nose little carrot nose and with my black paint marker i'm going to draw on his mouth my lashes and then taking some pink and a little sponge brush I'm going to sponge on some pink for his cheeks <clears throat> excuse me now I have this uh, decorative snow in my stash I got a couple bags of it I don't know why I never use it so I thought let's try something different using some Mod Podge I'm going to put the Mod Podge onto the snowman face and using that snow I'm going to stick it onto the Mod Podge and try and glue as much as I can on there to look like a snowy face. This is my first year doing Christmas stuff and I'm super super excited to be doing it because I love doing Christmas stuff. Now I have this ribbon I got it off of actually uh, a, it's uh, Christmas pajamas it came all wrapped up and stuff I always keep everything keep the ribbon. We're going to use this as his scarf trying to set it up so that he stays in place so I'm just going to wrap it around and glue in spots to keep it in place and then I'm going to cross the other one over and glue that down into the spot too if you're new here I'd like to say welcome I hope you enjoy this video if you do give it a thumbs up and if you can please subscribe I'm working on getting on to a thousand if you're coming back and you're already a subscriber Welcome back. I'm so happy that you're here. Now I found these other two buttons in my stash and I thought those would look perfect right in the middle there. First the white one and then the blue one on top. I'm just using some hot glue. 
And voila, a cute little snowman head. I love snowmen. Taking these three classical, cla classical, yeah, jars. They're, they had spaghetti sauce in them. I'm going to take them outside and spray paint everything white. Again, I didn't want a full, full coverage, just a frosted, some coverage here, some coverage there. But the lids I wanted sprayed it completely white. And that's what they look like. I keep all my jars because you never know what you can use them for. Now what I'm going to do is I found these three images online. Mrs. Claus, Santa, and a snowman. I'm going to cut them out as close as I can to the image. And with the magic of, they're done. Taking the snowman Seeing how he's going to lay down, I'm going to use some Mod Podge. Put a base coat down of Mod Podge, a nice good base. Stick down the snowman and Mod Podge over top of that. This is just on regular printer paper. Just print it out. I do the same thing for Mrs. Claus and for Santa. Now for the lids. I'm going to paint two red and one black. If I've never said it before, I really don't like painting with red. <laughs> it always needs like a billion and one coats, I swear. I also have three little wooden knobs that I'm going to paint two black and one red. You'll see them soon. You can see them up above there by the paint. There's three little wooden knobs. Those also get painted as well. Now that this part is dry, while we're waiting for the lids to dry, I'm going to embellish my little jars here and there. I'm going to put a little white pom-pom on Santa's hat. I'm going to put a little red pom-pom on Frosty's hat. And for Mrs. Claus, I'm going to make a bow with some really fine thread not thread, ribbon. Just taking some ribbon and making a simple bow, doing the bunny ears, looping them together, tighten it, and I glue it right there to where Mrs. Claus' bow is already showing. I then went into my stash and I thought Miss Claus needed some bling. So I went and found a little tiny bling rhinestone there, crafter one, and glued it right into the middle of her bow. This claws needs some bling. Yeah, and my finger got stuck and I burnt my finger. Hot glue, I tell you, hurts. Now we're going to glue the little knobs that I painted on top of the jar lids. Red one goes on top of the black one. And the two black ones will go on top of the red lids. And as you can see, I added some ribbon around the tops of these jars. I forgot to record, sorry. I was kind of just in my zone and started putting ribbon on and then I realized I wasn't recording fitting all the lids back on I'm going to use these as coffee whitener and sugar for my coffee corner for in the winter Santa Mrs. Claus and Frosty the snowman I bought the salt and pepper shakers at a garage sale about a week ago I believe they're handmade because they have a, an etch in the bottom of someone's name or initials. I thought they were pretty neat. I had to clean these up really, really well. And all I'm using right there is water and a rag. And it needed more than that because they were pretty dirty. I'm going to take them outside and spray paint them entirely in white. And that's what they look like white. Now, I'm sitting there thinking because my original thought was I was going to make gingerbread gingerbread men out of them and I was looking at it and I was thinking how am I going to make a gingerbread man out of that and then I thought nope we're going a different direction taking both of these ribbons the red check and the black check I'm going to 
measure out, wrap it around the top part of these salt and pepper shakers. Wrap it around to see how much I need. And then cut it off. Here I'm trying to see if my idea is going to work. Cut off what I need. And then I'm going to glue it into place just along that edge there. Just adding hot glue here and there all the way around, gluing it down into place. <clears throat> this ribbon comes with wire on the sides. So what I do on the top one is I pull the wire out so I can cinch it together in the middle. But I suggest you do that before you glue it on. It's a little easier when it's not glued on to your piece. Cut off the extra that I don't need. And here's where I pull out that little metal piece. But don't throw it away, we're going to use it. Cinch it together on top, and then using that little metal piece, I'm going to wrap it around and secure it into place. I do the exact same thing for the other salt shaker and the black and white ribbon. Now taking that sim same ribbon, I'm going to cut a little piece off and wrap it around to hide where that metal piece is, just to trim it off and hide it. And this is what they look like so far. Now to draw on their faces. Just drawing on with some pencil, their eyes, a carrot nose, and a mouth. I do the same thing to the one with the black and white checkered hat. Taking my black acrylic paint from Dollarama and a very fine brush, I then paint in where I drew in the eyes and the nose and the mouth. I use orange for the nose to make it look like a carrot. Just take your time at doing it. No need to rush it. That way there's no mistakes made. Add a little pink to the cheeks. I know snowmen don't have rosy cheeks, but I like rosy cheeks. Now I'm going to take the Mod Podge and cover the entire salt and pepper shaker just to protect all that paint. So it doesn't scratch off or chip off. Gives it a nice coating and a nice protection. This one brush I was using, all the little fibers and hairs kept falling out. So this one salt and pepper shaker snowman there, got little hairs all over them. I did change my brush when I did the second one because it was driving me nuts trying to get all those little hairs off and there they are super cute little man little woman now taking the same ribbon wrapping it around the bottom cut off how much I need and then I'm going to cut it into I need I used uh, two squares basically and then I fray the edges just taking some of that fiber and pulling it off just to give it a little bit of a fray and then I glue it into place all around the bottom edge there giving them matching scarves I always make sure when I'm gluing to start and finish at the back so when they're sitting there you don't see the two ends gathering together and then in my stash, I had uh, this garland of snowflakes, red snowflakes, and I cut two off, and that's going to be their embellishment on front of their scarves. I was going to paint one black to match the black and white one, but then I kind of like the red popping out there on her. If you haven't guessed it, the black and white one is a female. 
and the red and black one is a male. I like them. They're super cute. There's, uh, I put some little lights inside the snowman. There's the whitener sugar and creamer set. And my little snowman, salt and pepper shakers. And all three of them together. I've had these three wood pumpkins in my stash for quite a long time. I got them from the Dollarama. And the first thing I need to do is to get those stickers off. Some came off easy, some were hard to do. So I had to use my heat gun to help me remove them. Next, I'm taking off all the little stringy things that hang them up. I won't be needing these. Now I'm taking this dry spackle, dry spackling, this spackling, it's pink in color, and I'm just gonna fill in two of the holes on top because I didn't want those to show. This stuff here goes on pink, but when it's dry, it turns white. So then you know it's time to sand it off and smooth it out. Next, I'm going to sand all the pumpkins, front and back. But not the top yet, because it's not dry. Now it's time to paint. I have these acrylic paints in my stash for quite a while and I figured I'd try and use them. So I took some orange and some brown and made a mixture because I didn't want a bright orange but I didn't want a brown. I kind of wanted a burnt orange. I paint the first pumpkin this color. Paint the second pumpkin a different color of an orange. And then I painted the thir third pumpkin another different color. Now I'm taking some brown and I'm just going in um, kind of like angled areas to give the pumpkin some definition. Because they're not always just one color, they've always got a couple of different colors in them. And I do this to all three pumpkins. Some I use brown, some I use a little bit of a lighter orange, just to give them a little more definition. And that's how they turned out. And I also painted the backs of all of them orange. Now it's to sand off that spackling, and it comes off fairly easy. Next is to paint the tops of these pumpkins, the little part that hooks onto the vine there, <laughs> that part. I paint it brown, and then I mix in a little black with the brown, and I paint over top of that. Was that black or green? Now I can't remember. I missed it. And there's all three done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to glue the top one onto the other two. Using my wood glue and hot glue, I glue it right on top of the two. If you're a returning subscriber, I'd like to say welcome back. Love having you here. I so appreciate you guys' support. And if you're a new subscriber, welcome. Love having you here. I really hope you hit that subscribe button and like this video. Would sure love to have you in our YouTube family. Now I'm just using some clamps to hold it all together to make sure that it really combines together. Now it's time to make a bow. Using this burlap ribbon, we're gonna try and make a bow. And I'm also gonna use some of this brown. I have to say, I'm not very good at making bows. Making bows actually gives me a little bit of anxiety because it just, my fingers get confused. I think uh, one of these days I'm going to make, uh, it's, I think it's called a bow maker. It looks fairly easy to make. What do you guys think? Should I make a bow maker to help me make bows? I think I might have to. I'll show you guys how to make one too. So just taking my ribbon, folding it like one of those awareness ribbons. Taking a, one of those there, plastic thingies. I forget what it's called zip tie and I tie zip it into the middle tightening it all up fluffing the bow fixing it clipping off the end and then I'm going to dovetail the ends of my ribbons you guys get the fast version of me making a bow if I wasn't to speed it up and cut out pieces you'd be here watching me for a good 15 minutes trying to make a bow it's all good though. I get it done in the end. It's all a learning process. 
there's a couple of YouTubers that uh, make bows. And uh, I once in a while go and re-watch their videos because I guess that's the only way to learn, eh? When you watch and try it yourself. Now I'm going to take that bow and glue it right onto the top there. Now it's time to add some leaves. Taking a few different colored leaves, I'm going to glue two on either side of those pumpkins. And then I also glue two, not three, two, didn't like three, didn't like four either, to the bow. But first, we're going to add this pretty orange flower. That's an orange sunflower according to the little sticker. Gluing on the first two leaves. I really had fun making this sign. I just love the colors and trying different ways of doing things, different techniques. Clipping off that little nub in there that gets in the way and I'm going to glue that flower right into the middle. Now taking some greenery, I just there was this big long greenery that I picked up at the dollar store. I'm going to glue those into place as well. Now I was trying to decide the orange rope or this jute rope and I went with a jute rope and I'm going to glue it all around those pumpkins on every pumpkin just to give it a nice outline and a little bit of texture to the sign. Oh there I am with no glasses on because yes they're still broken. And this is how it looks. Time for a hanger. Taking some more jute rope. I tie a knot in both ends. Flood it with some hot glue, glue them down. I take a little more of that burlap ribbon stuff, glue that on top on both ends. Just to give it a, to hide it a little more. A little more security and then I add just to give it some more prettiness I add a, a leaf to both the ends something a little different now to add some raffia taking some strong long strong long pieces of raffia I'm gonna tie it around the two pumpkins that are on the sides using a little hot glue just to keep it into place Now I'm going to make a finger bow, just wrapping some of that jute cord around my fingers, taking another piece, tying it in the middle, fixing the little loops, trimming it up, and gluing it into place. And I do another one for the other side. And there you have it. A nice fall sign. I absolutely love it. It's so pretty. I've never made one of these before, and I'm so happy that I had the pumpkins to do it. I hope everyone likes it as well. So I found this round wood board sign at Walmart. It was on sale for really cheap. First one I'm going to do is take off the little tag there, which they had on with a screw for some reason, and the hanger. A little rope hanger and uh, two of those staples. Just using a screwdriver and some pliers, I just pull it right out. Then I'm going to take my little hand sander and sand all the edges around. Because even though this was pre-made and bought, it was, the edges were still pretty rough. And on top was still pretty rough. So I just gave it a nice sanding and cleaned off all the dust, including on my table. Now I also picked up this bee. It too was on sale. And I'm going to glue it right in the middle of the circle. Oval. Oval? Yeah, it's more of an oval than a circle, right? Using wood glue and hot glue. Just going to apply the glue all over, flip it over, and place it right in the middle. Pressing it down to make sure it contacts really well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then, 
just using a, this is just a candle out of a tea light. I'm going to rub it all over the board, but not on the B. And I'm also going to rub it along the edges of this board as well. This is a new paint technique that I've been watching other people do, and I thought I'd give it a try. So next what I do is I use the uh, paint and baking soda mixture that I have, and I'm going to paint the board, not the B, all with this color, including all around the edge. I don't uh, paint the back of this board because it's actually a really nice color on the back, so I just left it the way it was, natural. And then using a small brush, I get into all the little smaller details. Now using this brown paint, I think it's called Burt Umber, I'm going to paint the B all with this brown. getting in all of the little areas. Now that it's all dry, I found these scrapers in the garage and I'm first I'm trying this one out and realizing it's not working too well but so I use this little one and if you notice everywhere I put that candle wax all the paint is going to chip off really easily and nicely and it gives it that really nice rustic chippy look which is pretty cool. I kind of like it. I didn't do a lot of it because I wasn't quite sure how I would like it, but if I ever do it again, I'll do it a little more on the board. But I really like the technique and how it came out. I thought this was pretty cool. Easy way of making it distressed. Now taking these stickers, I'm going to place the letters along the stick of the B. Starting with the top one, and then I go down to the bottom one. And then I put all the other letters in between to spell out the word bros, which is my last name. If you're one of my returning subscribers, I'd like to say hello and welcome back. I'm so happy you're here watching me and cheering me on doing these creations for you. I'm so happy that you return all the time and give me such huge support. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to say welcome. We love having you here. If you could, please hit that subscribe button, like this video, and don't forget to turn on the notifications for all my other videos so you can see in the future. I do all sorts of crafts, DIYs, trash to treasure, literally trash to treasure, like taking garbage stuff and making it new, and all kinds of other crafts. I'm sure there's something on here that you will love. Now that they're all on, I'm just using my finger to make sure that they're all sticking down good before I move on to the next step. And then taking that same paint that I was using, I'm going to dry brush over top of the letters and along the B, just to give it a distressed dry brush look. And then using the same brush, I dip it into the brown and I dry brush along the backboard very lightly, not a very hot, heavy dry brush. Taking my utility knife, because I don't have a little pokey thingy, I take off all my letters, revealing the letters underneath. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I was realizing it wasn't quite dark enough. I took this brown touch-up marker, it's a dark brown, and I just colored in the letters to make them stand out just a little bit more. Then taking this jute rope, I'm going to glue it all the way around this bee. 
helping it to stand out a little more and give it a little more texture to the board, to the sign. Now this is where I'm not sure what I was going to do. I had all these pieces pulled out because I thought I was going to use them all. So then I started with the green leaves, added in the colorful ones, looked at it, wasn't quite liking it, thought maybe I could put it there, tried the flower on top, wasn't really liking it, tried it on the bee, wasn't really liking that either, it was covering her up too much. Maybe a little sunflower. Didn't really think that was going to work either. So as I was thinking, I figured, well, I need to put a hanger on. So let's put a hanger on. So taking some more jute rope, I measure out enough so I can hang it, cut it. Then I tie knot, two knots in each end. Sorry, one knot in each end. I tie two knots. And then I staple it down with my staple gun. And then using my hammer after this, I just hammer them in a little more to make sure they're nice and secure. And then I figured out what I wanted to do. I have all these fall looking leaves and I decided to go with the leaves, individual ones. That one there had a little bit of sparkly on it. I really didn't like it, so I put it aside. But just rearranging the leaves on the board here and there. Not a lot. Just a few here and there. Less is more, right? And I figured it needs a bow or something there at the bottom. So taking more of that jute rope, I wrap it around four of my fingers. I think about uh, four times. And then taking another piece of rope, I tie it off in the center. Had some issues with this bow, but I finally got it figured it out. But I tie it off in the center really tight. Clip off the ends. And I also add a little bit of glue in where that knot is. And then I glue it right there at the bottom where the two ends of the rope meet when I started and started and finished going around the bee there. And it hides that little spot. Trim off the ends so they match. And then I take some leaves and I glue them in behind. Kind of hides the S there, but that's okay. Just using some hot glue, glue it down into place. And there you have it. Here it is set up. If you notice, I added one more leaf in the top left corner there. It was looking a little empty. But I like how it turned out. I love fall colors. I like the fall for the crispness, crispness and for just the bright, wonderful colors. They just make you feel so alive and so warm. But I prefer summer because it's nice and warm. I could skip winter altogether. Just leave winter out. So on today's video, we are going to need two pieces of wood cut with a triangle and a hole in the center. They're seven and a quarter inches wide by 10 and seven eighths. They're gonna be the front and the back and there's a one and a quarter inch hole. We are going to need another two pieces, which are going to be the sides. They're seven and a quarter inches by four and a quarter. Then we'll need another two pieces, which will be the roofs, roofs, the roof, five and a half inches by eight inches. And then you'll need a bottom piece, which is seven and a half by nine and a half. Yes, it's cut a little crooked, but no worries to that. 
I also cut another little bottom piece which was six by eight inches because I realized at the end I needed it and then I have this piece it comes from a wheelbarrow it's part of its handle and I thought hey I can use this it's 22 inches long by about one and three quarters inches wide I had to cut off the top there because it was all pretty rigid and whatnot but I give it a nice little cut first what we're going to do is we're going to secure the bottom piece here to the handle from the wheelbarrow I figured instead of throwing the handle out we can use it for something so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill a hole into the handle and then I also pre-drill a hole into the bottom piece but first before doing that I grab my ruler and I mark an X from corner to corner so I can find the middle I didn't want this to be wonky and offset so I this is the way I did it found the middle and dr pre drilled my hole then taking some wood glue I put a bunch on the handle end and then I take a screw and I screw that bottom piece down if you're new here I would like to say welcome and thank you for joining us if you're a returning subscriber hello again I'm so glad you came back I do all kinds of DIY crafts anything DIY from trash to treasure I use a lot of wood I take things and make them new again all sorts of crafts now what we're going to do is we're going to build the the house and what we're making is a birdhouse so we're going to take the front piece with the hole and we're going to glue the two sides onto this onto the sides obviously and then what I do after that is I pre-drill some holes and then I screw them down I first tried using staples it didn't work then I tried using a nail and hammer the wood was too strong so in the end I pre-drilled holes and used screws holds a lot better now what I'm doing is I'm pre-drilling my holes I do three on each side and then I do the same thing on the back end I put the back piece with the triangle on the back and I pre-drill my holes and screw them in I'm once again sitting outside on this beautiful beautiful sunny day so if you hear birds and stuff that is why now we're going to attach the roof I thought I was recording when I did the first part of the roof but I wasn't so I hit record and did it again pre-drilling some holes again I do the exact same thing pre-drilling holes add the wood glue put in my screws there's a few where I had to pre-drill the hole a couple times because I kept missing but I'm not too worried about those holes because you'll see we're covering them up Now it's time to paint checking it all over making sure everything is good taking my brush that I have wrapped up in a plastic bag now you're probably wondering why I wrapped it in the bag if your paintbrush is wet enough you just make sure it's wet wrap it tightly in a bag or some people will use a glove like a latex glove that they're using to paint with or some kind of plastic you wrap it up and it'll keep it soft and wet and then you can continue reusing it especially if you're working with a paint all the time you don't want to continuously wash the brush it's a good way to save it and not have to use many brushes and now I'm painting the roof brown the white is just for a base coat the brown is because what we're going to do next I didn't want uh, 
the color to show through. I wanted it kind of to match if it happened to show through what we put on. So that's why I painted it brown. Getting all the edges and I get all underneath as well. Now taking these shims, I cut them into about an inch and a half pieces. Um, just using my snips here. I just cut some I had to break by hand because they were a little thick and my hands were getting sore but I cut about 84 of them now taking these little pieces we're going to shingle the roof with them basically like that what I do is I put a strip of wood glue down and for the first set I just use hot glue on the edge because it's got that wood glue to stick on but after this first row is done I put another strip of wood glue and then each piece I put wood glue and hot glue on it so it gives me that fast hold so I can continue working and then the wood glue will give me a long time hold. And here I'm showing you the next set. I don't show you the entire roof, that would be kind of boring. I do show you how I finish the tops. I continue doing this until the whole side is done and here I'm showing you how I am doing at the top once again my wood glue and then it's basically going to sit down like that kind of even with the other side of the roof the other little part where it comes up wood glue and hot glue and I press it down into place and then I'll show you again how to do the other side how I did the other side of the roof to match up with this side Sorry if you hear me blowing quite often. I have a bug that keeps bugging me. <laughs> I'm blowing him away. <laughs> and here's how I'm showing you. I'm just butting it up against the other shim that is sitting there. So it kind of meets the two together and gives it that peak. And then there's no gap in between. Now, taking this gel stain by Minwax, it's Brazilian Wedwood. I first tried with a sponge brush, didn't like how it was going on. So then I use a nice clean rag and I apply this gel stain all over the white parts of the house. You'll see I have sticks there. I had another idea. I was going to cut all these sticks and glue them to the house after all this brown because the white was showing through. So I was gonna paint it brown or stain it brown. And then I was going to glue all these branches onto the house. Don't worry, no tree was harmed in the making of this video. These were all sticks that were on the ground. But then you'll see I changed my mind because after this dried, I kind of liked it. Kind of gave it that wood look. But you'll see what I do to give it a little more pizzazz, and a little more darker in color. But I also stained the shims in this same color. Just applying it with the sponge brush and wiping it off with a rag. Now, instead of using those sticks, this is what I'm going to do. I take some black paint, put it into a little cup, and I add a bunch of water to make it like a stain. And then, obviously I mix it together. And then taking a clean rag, I lightly go over, it looks like a lot at first, but as you rub it in, it goes away. I lightly go over the entire piece, darkening up that brown and darkening up the, the wood and stuff. And I really, really love how it turned out. So that's why I didn't do the sticks. I then take a small paintbrush, just a cheap little plastic paintbrush, and I use the gel stain and where the roof meets the birdhouse, where it's all white, I fill all that in with the gel stain so that white isn't showing. And then I also do underneath 
the shims on the roof so all the colors kind of match together. Now this is the other piece that I cut. It's six by eight. We're going to glue that to the bottom. So then that way we have another piece that I'll glue to and screw to the other bottom. So taking that, I use my wood glue and some hot glue in some places and I adhere it to the bottom of this birdhouse. Now we're going to stick it to that. And again, using my wood glue and some hot glue, I adhere it to the base with the wheelbarrow handle to that. And then you'll also see me, I add in screws to, to the four corners to hold it down even better. A little more security. If you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button, like this video, and don't forget the notifications bell so you can find out when I upload all my other videos. Now it's time to add the little perch. And again, just using some wood glue and hot glue, I stick it right there in that little hole. I'm just using a piece of branch that I originally cut. Figured it matched nicely. Then I take it outside and I give it a good spray coat of this clear wood finish just to protect it when it's outside because it is outdoors. And there it is set up. It was pretty windy that day when I was recording it, but I absolutely love it. I've always wanted to make a birdhouse and here I did. It's really nice. Let me know what you think down in the comments. What colors would you choose? How would you make it up if you were to make this? Now I have this, I think it's a wood canvas board that you can get and a tea towel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the tea towel on the inside of this wood canvas board. I first tried to use Mod Podge. So I started on the first little half here, spread out my Mod Podge, and then laid the tea towel down. And then realizing with the Mod Podge, it was hard to get into the corners to make them fit properly. So I was started to use my hot glue. And then I decided as I can feel the Mod Podge seeping through the towel, it was best to use hot glue instead. So just using my hand and my spatula, I'm just smoothing the towel down into all the corners and getting it in there as tightly as I can. And then what I also do is I'll add some glue along the edge and on the top so that the towel wraps around the edge of this, we'll call it a sign now. Then taking my scissors, I'm going to trim off any of the excess fabric all the way around. And that's how it is looking so far. Now putting that aside in a minute, I'm going to use this board. It came out of a, a painter's kit of acrylic little tubes of paint and that was on top. I guess that would be the palette board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ruler and a knife, score it down just below that little circle and break off the end and then I'm going to sand that edge just a little bit to make sure there's no sharp edges. Get it all nice and smooth. Then taking my, uh, I think it's called Burt Umber, I'm going to stain the front and all the edges of this with this color. Just using a paintbrush. And then I take a cloth and wipe off any of the excess. Now that it's dry, I'm going to take my carbon paper. And all I'm using on this sign, I just uh, found this. If I can remember the link, I'll put it in the description box, but it was a free link. And I'm just going to trace out the Happy Thanksgiving. In Canada, our Thanksgiving is in October, at the beginning of October. So this is why I'm making a Thanksgiving sign. I took uh, orange and red, mixed them together. And now I'm going to use that color 
to paint in the main parts of the words or the letters I should say I do that for all of the letters and then taking my black paint marker I'm going to do all the shadowing of those words just drawing along and filling in everywhere it had a shadow. If you own a Cricut, you could also use a Cricut to do your letters instead of painting them on. Or if you're better at writing than I am, you can hand write them out all the same way. Or any way that you like, really. Now taking my Sharpie marker, everywhere I didn't use the black paint marker, I'm going to use the Sharpie marker just to outline the rest of the letters. Just to make them stand out and pop out a little more. Taking some jute rope, I'm going to glue along the edge of this frame all the way up until it meets the towel. And I'll be showing you here, I glue all the way around and when I get back to the beginning, I cut it off and glue and then I start another one. This way all my lines, all my jute rope are all in the same line and there's no wonky curvy areas. So here I'm just, I'm finally at the other end and I'm cutting it off. And then I start again on my next one. And I believe I have, I went up five rows all the way to the edge. Now taking my lighter, I'm going to carefully burn off any of those little pieces sticking out, all those little hairy pieces sticking out. And if there was too much, I used my scissors and trimmed it down before I did this because I didn't want a big fire. If you're too afraid to use a lighter, you can also do this step by using scissors. It could be a little scary, you know, you're afraid to catch something on fire. So this another safer method, method is with scissors. Now using some jute rope, I'm going to make a hanger on the back. Tying a knot in each end, flooding it with glue and adding a little bit of ribbon on top. And let's add the sign right in the middle using some hot glue. I hot glue it down into place. Now I have all these embellishments in my stash and I think it's called a cornucopia that little basket thing there so I'm just trying to set it up to see how I would like it before I start gluing anything down I'm arranging it around and then I realized I really need to look at it so I used a candle to hold it up and then I decided I'm going to have the cornucopia on the one side and have all the items falling out of it I know some of them are a little bit bigger than this little cornucopia but I like it I put a little bit of Spanish moss inside the, the little cornucopia, I think it's what it's called. And then I started hot gluing all the little pieces down. Now, yay, I get to use my bow maker. If you'll notice, I made this bow maker in a previous video. I'm just going to take my orange ribbon, make my bows and my tails. And then I decided to use this jute rope and do the same thing. Didn't really have to. That one's a little easy to make, but... I used it anyways. It was there. Taking another piece of cord and just wrapping and tying it around on the back. Snipping off the extra pieces. Fluffing my bow. Dovetailing my ends. And then I'm going to hot glue it right in the middle of this sign. And there it is. Same garage sale. I found a few of these here. They were 50 cents each. And what I do first is I pull them off the stand and then I'm trying to get the rest of that little dowel out of there so using my snips I snip off most of it and then I carefully with a utility knife score the bottom of it until it's flat with the bottom if you're a returning subscriber coming back over I'd like to say welcome love having you back if you're new I'd like to say welcome to you too. Please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like this video and hit that bell. Now taking some extra stems from florals, I've just cut two pieces off and then I bent them into a curve and I'm gonna hot glue them to the side of these little cuppy things, which are now gonna be cups. Sanding down the bottom part and I'm gonna putty in those little holes. I'm using the other side as the top part, but I like to see holes missing, not there, you know, so I decided to putty them in. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to paint these little cups with my baking soda and paint mixture. 
I get all around the cup and on the inside. And then with the my brown paint, I'm going to paint that little round part on the bottom of the cup. And I also paint the little stand. I really enjoyed making this craft. I thought they were super cute when I was done. I paint the front, the back, and all around the sides. Now I printed these uh, little images off on tissue paper. You just tape your tissue paper to a regular piece of paper and run it through your printer. Cutting them down as close as I can get to the image. Some of them were pretty easy, but the words, they had a little bit of showing left. And using my Mod Podge and a paintbrush, I'm going to apply a little bit of Mod Podge onto the cup and then pick the image up with my paintbrush and apply it onto my little cup. And I do the same on the back side and I do the same thing for the other little cup as well. And here they are. Aren't they cute? Cute little tiny cups. Tea and coffee. I love them. They're absolutely adorable. I think I might try making other things this way as well. And here they are set up on my coffee stand, by, or on my little tear tray by my coffee stand. For some reason I lost the footage, I think I may have deleted it, for how I did all these boards. So I'm showing you here, I painted all the backs with that uh, creamy color. And then I mixed in colors. I'm going to show you all the colors that I mixed in. First I used a brown and then I would mix in some yellow and then I would mix in some orange and then I would mix in some green and I kept going and that's how I created all these different colors. Ask me to do it again and I will not be able to do it. I'm so sorry I lost that footage in the beginning. I don't know what I was doing. I must have deleted it on accident. But it's all good. I can at least show you how I somewhat did it. Now on to the next step. So taking my piece of paper that I uh, created all of this on uh, just on WordPerfect and I'm going to use my carbon paper and do what I normally do. Trace over it with pencil and transfer the image and the words onto my boards starting with fall. I just either trace around each word or I just write it out individually. So I can have the proper lettering the way I like. Showing you the first one, fall bucket list. The second one, hay ride. Third one, pumpkin patch. Then we got corn maze, apple cider, brisk walks, leaf piles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color them all in with paint. Some of them I use paint markers. Others I would mix paint together and use that to color in my words. And again, starting with the first one. I don't think I make you watch me do the whole thing. Oh yes, I speed it up. Thank God. Because if I did it in real time, you would be here for hours. There's the first one, fall bucket list. And you got hayride, pumpkin patch, corn maze, and so on. Now I printed off these images. Some of them I found on Pixabay and some of them are on my own. I printed them off on tissue paper. And what I'm going to do is taking my little paintbrush, clean paintbrush and some water. I'm going to go around the edges with that and then tear the tissue paper off. And then <clears throat> matching the pictures with each of the words, I'm going to Mod Podge those pictures onto the boards. First starting with the hayride and then so on and so forth. Putting the Mod Podge down, picking up my picture of on, on tissue paper and Mod Podging it down on top. And then you set it aside to dry. careful doing this. Some of them I did tear the tissue paper a little bit, but I was okay with that because it's supposed to kind of look rustic. Now I had this piece of wood already stained and everything in my stash, and I'm going to use my wood glue and hot glue to glue all the boards onto it. Later on, when I find uh, some nails for my nail gun, 
I will use those to secure it a little bit better. But I couldn't find them at the time. So I'm just going to place them randomly, some up, some down, some straight, just along that stick. All these pieces of wood I had in my stash. I didn't have to go out and buy anything. Um, they're just one by threes, some rough lumber one by threes. You can use whatever lumber you want, whatever you have. You can even from Dollar Tree, they have arrows that you can use instead of just straight ones, have little arrows going back and forth. That would be kind of neat. Really anything you want. And you don't have to make it as big. This is just for inspiration. And there you have it. I'm going to take it outside and spray it with some clear coat. And there it is all set up in my milk container for the moment. Not sure if it's going to stay there, but I kind of liked it at the moment. And I love this sign. I used to have it as a printable just on a piece of paper and I thought, why not make it look like this? So I found this piece of scrap wood in my little bin measures almost 16 inches long just under first what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand it all around get all of the extra little pieces that are hanging on off in that sticker and then I'm going to paint it with my baking soda and paint mixture in that nice cream color mushroom color more I guess painting both sides and all the edges. While that's drying, I didn't have any dowels, so I had these uh, a broken spoon and a part of another broken spoon, and I thought I could use these. So just sawing off with my hand saw, the broken part there that's sticking out, and then I saw the stick off of the spoon part of this wooden spoon. When using a hand saw, just slowly go back and forth. Don't push down, just back and forth in long motion. Now measuring it out because I need two pieces from this, I find the center and then again I saw it in half. Sanding off the little ends and then I paint them with this burnt umber brown. If you're a returning subscriber, I'd like to say hello and welcome back. Love having you here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Hope you stick around. Please hit that subscribe button, like this video, and don't forget that notification bell. Now using my ruler, I'm just marking off every half inch. So I started at the half inch, put a mark, one inch, put a mark, one and a half, put a mark. And then using my ruler again, I'm going to draw those little marks in a little more. The half inch ones are shorter and the one inch ones are a little bit longer. I do this all the way down the board. Now, taking a smaller fine marker, I'm going to mark in my numbers, starting at half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, all the way down to 15 and a half. Finding my center point, I'm going to take my marker and mark two dots in the middle there, and then I mark a third dot down at the end. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to pre-drill some holes. I found a drill bit the same size of the ends of my spoon. Sorry if you hear a four-wheeler. My son is out four-wheeling around and he's getting close. So I'll talk a little louder. And I just drill in part of the way. I don't go all the way through. I just, just enough so I can fit in the parts of that spoon. And then taking my sander, I sand off any little pieces that are sticking up. Now making sure my sticks fit into these little holes. 
and they fit pretty good. I'm going to take my wood glue, put some into the holes. I put quite a bit in there, but I had to make sure these stuck. And then taking my hot glue, I put a little bit on the stick and I push those pegs into those holes. Wiping off any extra glue. Taking my marker, I'm going to write in Lamis Creations DIY on one side and Bow Maker on the other side. I've been wanting to make one of these for a while, so I thought let's give it a try. And here I am showing you how it's used. Just taking any kind of ribbon. I just found this on the side, so I grabbed it. Putting it in to make a tail. And then you make a loop. This is my first time using it, so I was kind of learning at the same time. You make a loop. Come on, make your loop. You bring it down in between those pegs, twist it. Make another loop. This is in real time showing you, so that just shows you how slow I am at it. Twist it again so that you have the right side of the ribbon coming up and there's your other tail. And then you can fluff up your loops there, your little bow parts. Make them look as thick as you want. And you have your little bow. Now I'm going to show you. You can also make a double bow or a triple bow or however many loops you want. Just twisting it again, making a loop. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. Putting it down in between those pegs. Twist it and make another loop. I was having issues with it being on that other peg. So yeah, I got took it off that peg. <laughs> I think it's because this one was wired. So maybe it was just, I don't know. I'll figure it out. As I do it more, I'll get better at it. And there you have a double loop. You just fix your little loops there and nice pretty bow. This is a game changer for me. Now I can make some nice pretty bows. I'm so happy. I can't wait to use it. Yay! I can make pretty bows. So first I found these in my stash. I have a whole bunch of them. They're already all pre-painted white. Wait, white. And what I'm deciding to do is I'm going to take this putty and at first with my fingers I'm going to kind of spread it and make it all bumpy all over this one. Just using my fingers. All over the jar, but not on the rim of the jar or pot, not a jar. And then on this one, I'm using this little spatula thing that I have. And I'm going to use that and spread it all out. And then I'm going to try and smooth it like you would a uh, cake. Icing on a cake. Smooth it all down to make it a, a little bit different. I thought this would be fun and neat to do. Took a good day and a half for all of this to dry, but it's all good. If you hear rain in the background, I'm sitting out on my porch and it is raining. So I found all these pumpkins at Walmart. They're just over a dollar a piece. And what I'm going to do is paint them all. Wasn't really liking the colors they were. I was going to go with something different. So I took some orange and some red and brown, painted the one, added some white, painted the second one. Then I took some green. Some black I think I add brown and I also add white <laughs> into this one and then I also add in a little bit of baking soda to make it a little thicker and I paint that green pumpkin this color then taking my baking soda and paint mixture I painted that other pumpkin 
And then taking the same brush, I added some brown paint, painted that other pumpkin. And now taking way too much of this gray paint and the same brush again, I'm going to paint this pumpkin. And here they all are, all dry. Then I go ahead and separate them into three and remove all the little stems on them. I take the green one first, slide it onto a skewer. And I'm making sure here that there is enough so I can stick it in to the pots. Then taking some raffia, I'm just going to take a few pieces, wrap it around that skewer. And then taking the second pumpkin, I'm going to add some hot glue down and then glue it on top. Then I glue a leaf on top, a leaf, yeah, a leaf on top of that one. And I glue the third one down on top of the second one, just like so. Again, adding some hot glue so they stick together. Now I found this branch out in my yard, so I'm just gonna cut a piece off and I'm gonna use that as the stem. Just using some hot glue and pushing it into place and holding until it sets. Taking some more raffia. I do eventually, you know, figure it out and get some foam and stick this in the foam so it's easier to work with. But I got some more raffia, glued it into place, and there's the foam. I finally <laughs> got it. And then I found this orange see-through ribbon, which I thought would go perfect with this. And all I do is tie it into a double knot there around the stem. And I use my hot glue just to glue it into place here and there. Dovetail my ends because they were a little too long, so dovetail them a little upwards. And this one is done. And then you'll see in the photo how I did the second one. Now that all that spackle is dry, I'm going to, I wanted to just dry brush over this one, but it ended up, I ended up painting the whole entire thing, which was fine. And then on the second one, which all the bumps, I just dabbed it all over the bumps just to raise it and make it look better. And then taking my baking soda and house paint, I just dabbed that onto this jar, making it look like that, which I love. And then taking some green acrylic paint, I did the same thing to this one. Just dabbed it all over to make it look like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Adding some rocks to the bottom for filler and for weight. And then I take a styrofoam ball, cut it in half, and I fill in the rest of the pot. I could not, for the life of me, find my other foam, so this is what I used. It works. Just using some hot glue. I know it's not going to stay forever, but just to keep it in place for now, and then I fill in around the pot. Then I take some Spanish moss, and I glue it on top of all that foam to give it a nice base. I do that to both of them. And this is how it turned out. I love them. I hope you like them too. I hope everyone enjoyed looking back on all those crafts that I made and are looking forward to all the new ones that come up soon. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. I thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like this video, and don't forget that bell. Have a nice day. Bye.